Hey y'all, welcome back to Ruth and Ruby. Today's video is all about thrifted versus styled, or the new way of saying thrift flips. So let's get into it. All right, we're gonna give it a good coat of Dixie Belle fluff. I like using chalk paint for this kind of project because it's a little bit thicker in nature, so it's gonna one coat's gonna do it. Um, if you've got Fusion Mineral paint on hand, that's fine too. You may just have to do two coats. So next, we're going to apply the Cherry Blossom Recycle Decoupage Paper, and I'm laying it out, just kind of figuring out exactly which portion of the paper that I want. And I really love that little gray stamp at the top, and then of course the bees. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the excess and line it up and I'm just gonna kind of crease it around that way I know exactly where I want it positioned. So now I'm gonna give it just a little starter section. So I'm gonna put just like in this corner here, this is my DIY paint liquid patina. Y'all know that is my absolute favorite decoupage medium. So I'm gonna give it a good coat of that. Don't forget to spritz your paper because that's gonna help with the wrinkles and creasing. So because as the paper lays down on the liquid patina and it gets wet and then it stretches. So if you wet it first, that's gonna allow you to move it around on your project just a little bit easier. So now we're gonna finish it up, more liquid patina, and I start in the center and just smooth it all the way out down to the edges. And you can see there, I've got a couple of wrinkles, but that's okay, I'm fine with that. But um, spritzing your paper first will definitely reduce that. So now we're giving it a good coat of liquid patina on top to seal it up. And then after I do that, I'm gonna let the whole thing dry. Once it's dry, then I'm cutting, coming back to cut off the excess here. If I had tried to do this while it was still wet, it would have just been a, a disaster and would have ripped it. And so make sure you let it dry first. And then I cut off the bulk. And then to get really nice clean edges, I took a razor knife to around the little metal piece of the typewriter case. So this is the other side. I wanted to give it a different paper because when I get tired of that super bright springy look and I want it to be a little more neutral for fall and winter, I thought this one right here was perfect. And this paper is called Musical Dragonflies. And I'll leave all the links for these products down below in the description box. So you can see this side went a lot faster and was a lot easier um, and smoother. So, you know, once you try something once and then you kind of have experience and it gets easier. So don't be afraid to try new things. So same process here, just smoothing out the paper from the inside out so that way you can you know smooth out those wrinkles and plenty of liquid patina don't be shy with that because with this big project you want to make sure that you've got complete coverage Okay, this next project, spoiler alert, might be my favorite in today's video. I love this rusty crusty toolbox. So I picked this out of literally some guy's yard. I don't even know. But anyway, so I'm giving it a good wipe down with some Dixie Belle White Lightning and paper towels because it is rusty and gross. So I'm taking some Dixie Belle Sea Spray and mixing it with... Renfrew blue and fusion mineral paint and I want to I'm making a mess goodness <laughs> I want to mix it up to a thick pasty type consistency and There's no rhyme or reason to how we put this on this is meant to be fun and don't think too much about it Just dab it on however you want to and I'm doing it in a Stippling motion because I want to get some peaks with that paint because as we go over it with our top coat and then sand back We want some of this color to pop through um, also, I just want you to be prepared. If you get a rusty crusty box like this, your rust is going to pop back through too, which is totally fine with me. If you don't want that, then I highly suggest you giving this thing two good coats of the brand new Dixie Belle Bonding Balls to help prevent that rust from coming through. So now I'm giving it a top layer of Fusion Mineral Paint Ingle Nook, and I love this color. It is such a beautiful uh, bright springy color but yet still kind of neutral so it's not going to be such a bright color that is in your face and you're going to want to like take it out of your house you know um, at the end of the season I think it can stay you know year round especially with this neutral transfer that we're going to add this transfer is called maize roses and this is actually laid out to kind of be one big transfer but it's really important for me to show you how you can use these transfers in so many different ways. It does not have to be 
used in this large format. So I'm just going around the roses and cutting them to where the, the roses would naturally just be so that you know, I'm not cutting off a bunch of petals. So I'm going to lay it here and you'll see later on in a minute, I decided that I actually wanted to fill in that little space there. So we're going to add a little bit more later on, but I just take this and I'm cutting it right there to allow a little more flexibility. So we're going to rub this on just like any other transfer, any other project, because we've used fusion mineral paint and it's got the built-in top coat. I don't have to add any additional top coat before I go in with my transfer. As soon as it's dry, I go straight in with this and then I take another portion that we just cut apart and I'm going to add it to the bottom left corner here. So after I did that, I looked at it for a few minutes and I was like, I really like this. And, you know, was debating whether it was enough or if I wanted more. But as you can see here, just a minute, I decided that more was more. All right. So as I am continuing adding flowers, I decided that it needed a little bit of wording. So I'm taking the words out of the center and I'm going to just totally chop this up. I want y'all to just watch and enjoy because it, like I said, these transfers do not have to be applied in the way that they are laid out. You cut them apart, use them however you want to. You can see I even took the little word of and snuck it in over there to the left of the latch. This is where the creativity really comes in. So I ended up just really cutting these apart and piecing them back together how they fit this particular project. And I love how it's turned out. All right, so to finish it off, I felt like we had just a little bit of empty space right here in the top center. So I'm gonna take that maze and add it right there. And that's gonna complete the transfer, at least so I think. As I stepped back and looked at the whole project, I thought the left side was just a little bit too bare. So here I am again, chopping this thing up. And this particular sheet had that little sprig coming out at the top and I knew it was perfect. So I'm sorry about the camera angle here. This was, this is a big box and that's as tall as the camera would go, but you're going to get the gist and that's all that really matters. So I took that little sprig and we went from the top, I'm sorry, the bottom left corner and come on Jackie, let's get it together. <laughs> there we go. So um, bottom left and to the center and that was really the perfect completion this time. All right, to finish it off, we are gonna give the whole entire toolbox a coat of Dixie Belle flat. Also, I wanna point out, you see those little spots there? Um, I actually started this project almost a year ago and never finished it and the, that's those rust spots coming back through that I was telling you about. So if that is something that you don't love, make sure to grab yourself some Dixie Bell bonding balls. That is now the new combination of Dixie Bell boss and slick stick. So those two products are now one, which is fantastic. All right. What do you think about my upcycled toolbox? Let me know in the comments below. Do you love it? All right, our next project is this little crate and we're gonna do some decoupage on it also. So I'm gonna give it a coat of Dixie Belle fluff. So that way we've got a nice neutral palette to start with. And I'm trying to not get it inside the little slats. I'll be honest, I'm a messy painter and I didn't do perfect, but that's okay. The sandpaper fixed it up. So I'm deciding which portion of the paper here that I want to put on the box. So, and I lay it down and I know that I want it to go right up to the edge there because I like the gray writing here. So I just crease it around the side of the box and then I'm going to cut it. All right. So I zoomed it up for you here. Same process, liquid patina, plenty of it. And then we spritz our little piece of paper, lay it right down, smooth it out. And I'm going to, again, let it dry before I try to do any cutting. If I try to cut in between those slats while it's wet, it's going to rip and you're not going to be happy. So don't do that. Be patient, let it dry. And then we just sand off the edges to tear it. And then I just take some scissors because, you know, I don't have my exacto knife. Who knows where it's at? So I took the scissors to cut the first piece and then I take the sandpaper and go in between the slat to, to get a nice clean edge. And then this cute little basket crate is ready to style wherever we want to put it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and then you can find all of these products I used at ruthandruby.com.